Welcome back to your latest weekly installment between the Crypto Dan and Collective Shift, where we break down the latest in Bitcoin and Ether's price, as well as some large altcoins uh, that are really moving uh, relatively more than the others in markets recently. Uh, we break down from the technical side of things, you know, what direction, what patterns are the charts showing us? And then from a fundamental perspective, we break down you know, the latest on Bitcoin, ETH and, and the large altcoins. I'll hand over to you, Cass. We've uh, at last, it feels like a while since we've seen you know, a fair bit of uh, green in uh, BTC and ETH, but you know, maybe maybe just walk through how how long it has been. Maybe I'm just uh, maybe my memory's uh, getting a bit cloudy. <laughs> <laughs> no, all good. Thanks, Matt. We have had a bit of a green weekend, which was which has been awesome to see. So yes. last week we we spoke about this this triangle and. I, I know I keep mentioning it and because I do find it happens all the time. We spoke about this wick and how I would think would have thought that the market was going to come down and clean that up. So what we what we did do is come down to clean up that wick. And then we had quite an impulsive move mm. move up. So this this triangle is now invalid. But what I've so I've sort of looking on the larger time frames now. So I'm on four hour. I will go to the daily. Actually, you can see it on here. So I've done my fibs, my latest fibs from this this pivot high up to about well 30k down to the bottom here, and which is 25.8, and we've had a push up to the 618 fib level. So the 618 fib level is a good reversal point. You can also see that there's a level of resistance through here. And this, the candle before this current one, it's got a big wick to the upside. So I would like to see, I would like to see a reversal here, um, but who knows? Who knows, you know, what Bitcoin's going to do. However, so we talk about this quite a bit, you know, with every push up, there's a pullback. With every push down, there's a reversal. So this is actually nice, healthy um, market, market structure, I guess. We just don't want to see Bitcoin keep dropping indefinitely. But what I am noticing is, so we've got our high, high here. And we made a lower low, lower high, lower low. And at the moment, we're making, we're still making, we're currently making a lower high. So market structure is still down. As you can see, I can I can draw a trend line down here. And so we're still, we're still heading, heading down mm. until market structure breaks. So at the moment, and sorry, that daily candle too is is a nice reversal is a beautiful reversal candle the one that closed today at, at 10. Mm. oh no sorry we're in this one sorry we're in this one in this candle so if we close like this tomorrow that that's a good indication that we could you know we've hit this trend line we've hit the level of resistance and we've hit the 618 fib level so that would be a nice would be a nice turning point to back, go back down to these lows that we've been, well, I've been speaking about for a little while now. So yeah, well, uh, they kept, yeah, they kept, kept trending towards it. And as you said, that, that trend is still, is still downward, but yeah, the, whether it hits that, hits that support or resistance in the next, well, the next daily close in particular, um, I noticed on that four hour, there was also, um, Oh no, yeah, it did break through. I think over maybe the last week, you know, the price of the last over the weekend broke through basically all of those moving averages. Um, all three of those. Uh, yes, we are above the moving averages at the moment. All three of them, yeah, which wouldn't have happened for a while, at least a month, maybe. Oh, we broke. Um, oh, we broke above maybe. them. Ah, uh, yeah, start of May. Yeah, yeah. yeah. End of April, start of May. Yeah, so. yeah. But something I wanted, 
I mentioned last week that I said I would touch on. And so I'm going to, sorry, not that one. Oh, yeah, it is that one. I, I said I was going to touch on why I think Bitcoin's going to at least hit this 20 to 22K range. Mm. So I am on the daily time frame here. And this is the range I'm talking about, this, my shaded box here. So there's between 20 and 22,000. So why do I think we will come and revisit, at least revisit this area? Firstly, there's a gap in the CME futures chart. So uh, normal stocks close over the weekends, whereas Bitcoin doesn't. So that can create, if there's movement on the weekend, that can create a gap. So first reason, there's a gap in this, in this range here. Second reason, my FIB level is the 786 is at the top of the range, so 22K. My 886 is sort of smack bang in the middle, which is 21K. That's my second reason. My third reason is, and remember this is the daily, so it doesn't look as big, but we've got this nice big green candle here that I think will need to be squared up. So come down to, to, to like fill it, sort of like, um, so see this big green candle, we came down here with this red one to pretty much close it out. So I'm expecting that to happen. And there's an order block down here. So there's a few reasons uh, and a level of support. So there's about five reasons why I think we will come down and revisit this area again. When, I don't know, I can't tell you that, but that's my reasoning why I think we will get there eventually. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I think uh, one thing just on Bitcoin's price, I think I did notice was, you know, that particularly in the US, the stock market has been, you know, performing pretty well over the past, you know, call it two or three weeks. And, you know, I think we did see Bitcoin sort of burst out of the gate in 2023, the first four months, it was, you know, up higher may is still looking like it'll be it the first i guess price decrease for uh, for the monthly perspective um for 2023 but you know, i think uh you've got some of the big indexes like um in the us like the nasdaq you know really you know increasing like you know double digit percentages like in recent weeks which um it was interesting to see that BTC and ETH sort of just continued sideways over like throughout the course of may um so you know, there was even another another even rally in the stocks over the weekend with news of, um, you know, the debt ceiling sort of issues or worries about the debt ceiling sort of coming to an end. Um, and that, you know, people are sort of att attributing that to the, the price rally maybe in BTC. But, you know, I always like to keep, keep a, a, you know, one eye on what's happening in, in stocks and whatnot. Um, because, yeah, there's a lot of people sort of, you know, making the case for, that there's going to be a big correction in stocks, but there always seems to be those people anyway. So, you know, I always like to, yeah, just have, have one eye on that, but definitely there's enough within going on within BTC where you can, you know, as traders, I suppose, like, you know, still make decisions within this own, this uh, Bitcoin sort of ecosystem or just this pair in particular. So, but just some, yeah, additional comments there from me. Yeah, no. Awesome. Um, Something I won't I won't put out a trade just yet because I would really like to see how this candle closes tomorrow. But assuming assuming we get a couple more indications too short, there could be a trade set up in here over the next 24 hours. I'll just get rid of my little pink circle there now. There are a couple, so. So you need reasons to take the trade. So at the moment, we are hitting that 618 FIB level at 28.380. We, we have hit that level of resistance and we have hit the trend line. So that's three indicators telling me, you know, there could be a possible trade coming up. I would like the MACD to sort of roll over a bit more. So 
that's one reason why I'm I'm not going to to put a trade out yet. But if we do get the indication too short, you can. This is the daily time frame, so it, it wouldn't be a real quick in and out. But you could set your target at this support level or down. Sorry, this support level at twenty five eight, or you can hold it. Assuming we are going down to that 20, 22K area. But that's what I'm looking at at the moment. And I will be watching on the smaller time frames over the next, you know, 24 hours to see to see if I get any more indicators to take the trade. Nice. Thanks for thanks for sharing that one, Cass. And I think with as we said last week, I think Ethereum or Ether uh, has, you know, really the last few months really just been, you know, following the lead of Bitcoin. And uh, yeah. while it is still up for the week, you know, it, it's basically up the same as BTC. So is that basically the same same situation, Cass, as last week? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. ETH will follow Bitcoin. So if, you, if you're if you watching to get in at levels, well, Bitcoin's actually easier to read at the moment, I feel. Well, for me personally as a trader. So... Mm -hmm. Just watch uh, Bitcoin and, you know, keep flipping to the ETH chart and, you know, if it hits levels that you're you're looking to buy in at or, or whatever. But, yeah, she, she will just follow the king here. Yeah, easy, easy. Um, all righty, we will move on to, uh, I think we've got Sol here. So the native oh. token of, uh, of Solana. Uh, Probably up there with again I, for you call these smart contract blockchain. So Ethereum is a smart contract blockchain, uh, which is different from Bitcoin, which is its own sort of blockchain. And Solana, I would put, you know, when you're thinking of all the smart contract blockchains out there, you know, you sometimes hear them called layer ones as well. Um, there's probably there would have to be fifty to a hundred of them out there in existence at the moment, possibly even more. Um, I, in my order of rankings, like Ethereum is like, you know, definitely number one in terms of metrics, such as, you know, how many people or how many addresses are using, are interacting with Ethereum every day. Uh, that's one really popular metric. Another one is, uh, how much like transaction volume is going through it, uh, every day or over a given time frame. Uh, other ones, you might see the amount of, you know, developers, you know, building on top of every layer one chain might be another way. Uh, so in terms of you know, various metrics such as those, uh, Ethereum, clearly number one. For me, I then have quite a bit of a gap. And then I would say second still, but a bit of a gap is Solana um, personally. And then you know, I would probably put Avalanche uh, slightly below Solana in terms of the ones that you know, at least are catching my attention given all those metrics. Uh, and then you've got quite... You know, a bit of a gap then below below Avalanche towards probably what I would just group up as being all the other ones, um, you know, like Cosmos, you know, Polkadot, uh, Phantom, Near Protocol, then all the all those dozens of other ones. So, just a bit of context there. Why are we talking about Solana today? Uh, it has you know had a decent you know a decent week in terms of price action, like outperforming you know BTC and ETH. The way I view it at the moment. Uh, Solana is almost my gauge, you know, rightly or wrongly. It's probably my gauge of um, how much appetite there is for risk in crypto. So, you know, while we say, you know, ETH follows BTC, you can definitely definitely say that all the altcoins follow BTC, but just uh, in a more amplified way. So, yeah, higher highs on, on like, bigger percentage gains when ETH goes up by like 1% or so. And on the complete opposite, when BTC falls by 1%, those altcoins might fall by, you know, 5, 6, 7, 8%. Uh, so Solana is is probably my like bellwether one that I'm tracking. Um, I continue to look at it from a long term, like I, personally, like I'm really, you know, getting close, I think, to starting to accumulate a position in Sol for the long term for reasons I think we've discussed on this, you know, maybe a month or, or two ago uh, about reasons why, but really I just think it's been uh, written off too prematurely and its fundamentals continue to sort of show me that there is still quite a, you know, a pretty engaged ecosystem of developers and users, um, which if it was, if it was supposedly like a ghost chain or a dead, a dead blockchain, it would have really, 
seen a dramatic sort of uh, decrease in all of those metrics um, throughout, well, as this, as this year has continued, but that's uh, definitely not what I'm seeing. So it's one of my favorites in terms of, I suppose, in the altcoin category, um, Solana is definitely up there. Nice. I actually, since our first research scan and you brought up Solana, I have been, I guess, following it more, more close, closely now, which mm. is good because it's good to, because I, I'm not fundamentals at yeah. all. <laughs> so it's good to get that fundamental, you know, background on, on the coin. So last time we looked at Solana, I had drawn pretty much pretty this. Much. I haven't touched it since since we spoke about it. I've just changed this bottom line as as Matt was talking uh, to make it more of a falling wedge. And we have we did come down. We didn't stop at the six one eight fib level at nineteen seventy eight. But we did find this level of support at about $18.74. We didn't get to the 786 FIB level either. But we have broken out of this wedge. And what I would like to see is a retest of this, of this trend line going down. So uh, even maybe the 618. So come back down, hit around here, which is about 1981. And then I'd like to see a nice push up assuming bitcoin doesn't do anything crazy uh would be good to see this play out so i've got a line up here so i've done fibs from this top local top at about 2588 down to this local bottom 1867 and this line here is the 618 fib level so that's always a good target uh, fib levels can be good targets for for your long and short trades. So something like this, I do hate going against the grain. Longing when, you know, when I want to short Bitcoin. But, yeah. but just a tight stop on stop loss on this. So entry would be about 1974 stop loss below this support line and just below the 786. I do sort of worry a bit about that structure, but that's why the, uh, the stop loss is quite quite tight. And then first target, the 200 EMA, the yellow line, and the 618 and this level of resistance at 24.26. So that's what I'll be looking at. Yeah, nice. I think uh, that that ha was tracking tracking it around that twenty to twenty one dollar range, and it seemed like yeah, throughout May, a lot of times it just kept trying to get above it, but kept failing. Um, but that was more just you know me sort of tracking its price, and I think now that it's through or at least above twenty, we'll see if it can yeah continue higher or or yeah again probably a lot has to do with uh with BTC, but probably another thing I will uh, add in here, which I guess is still fundamentals but relevant for traders as well um probably from like an investing standpoint when you think about like risk reward there's something that i think doesn't get talked about enough with just crypto in general like when you look at the market cap of bitcoin at the moment 540 billion eth 230 billion uh and then solana you know 8.2 billion you know you've got to ask you know, sometimes I like, you know, try to remind myself and ask myself, okay, you know, if I'm going, like, what am I doing here in terms of investing in BTC or ETH? Am I wanting, you know, a 20X or a 10X? Um, or am I just wanting to, you know, accumulate over time because, you know, I'm confident that this will be relevant in, you know, more than a decade's time, this, these blockchains. Mm. Um, you know, so I'm not, I, that's probably like where I, I guess that shift in, mindset is like really important like i don't see eth or btc doubling in market cap or, or tripling in market cap anytime soon because i think it's going to take substantial amounts of capital for that to happen but then when you got the likes of soul where you know it is just like 8.2 billion like in all the grand scheme of things isn't isn't that much capital uh when you're talking about a global market who you know it can be potential capital out there that can be deployed into crypto you know, they're ones where it could go up 
oh, well, I would definitely expect it to go up more aggressively to the upside when, you know, when a bull market does come back. But, but then again, it's that risk reward. What's that risk means it's that risk is still relevant there. It's higher risk Solana because it's not yet, you know, even from a fundamental standpoint, not yet as um, I suppose as, as safe or it doesn't yet have as much of a sort of product market fit enough of a developer ecosystem where you can be confident, Hey, in two decades time, like this is like, I'm almost certain this will, this will be existing. I can say that for Ethereum and Bitcoin for sure, but I can't say that yet for Solana. Uh, so risk versus reward is, is, you know, a really simple metric that I don't think gets talked about as much when people are talking about, you know, BTC 10 Xing in the next like 10 years or something like could happen, but you know, it, it's a lot easier for things like Solana and other altcoins to do that. Definitely. Oh, definitely. Definitely. And all time high for Solana was about $250. And, mm. you know, look at where we're sitting now. It's you come know, down like 92% or something like that. Yeah. But it's yeah. got a long, you know, it's, it, it can go up. It's got a long way, you know, to go to get there. But yeah the next bull run there's nothing stopping it you know it reaching that level or yeah you know making new highs yeah yeah no i agree there's not many projects i could say that about um in this space but soul like is one that you know i could see that see that happening provided um yeah that bull market does does end up coming back <laughs> <laughs> it will it will it will yeah I, I believe it will all right um yeah, then the next one here was uh, SNX. So the uh, I'm not sure if we've done this one before. The native token no. of uh, of synthetics. Now we haven't done it. So it's been around for oh, probably four or five years. It previously existed as a you know a, a different protocol with a different name. Um, you know, synthetics actually the core sort of team uh, does have its roots in Australia. So it was mainly an Australian sort of built up with Australian developers to begin with. And now it's um it's probably one of the most decentralized sort of projects out there. And you talk about these these DAOs or DAO, uh, these organizations who more or less are in control of, you know, directing where these protocols are going to go, where the, where they deploy capital, you know, where do they put their resources? Um, so now synthetics is a lot more, I guess, distributed in terms of people contributing to it. But the SNX token is uh, one that I wanted to highlight today. It's um, probably in the DeFi category. It is in the DeFi category, so decentralized finance. Uh, when you talk about crypto being in a bear market, uh, DeFi is probably even, it's it's had a worse time, I suppose, than, than gen general crypto market. It's been in a bear market a lot longer than the regular overall market, uh, mainly due to probably regulation concerns. I would probably put that down to. Um, and interest rates also going higher in just traditional finance. So, you know, there's less sort of, um, less appetite, I suppose, for, you know, generating yield on these DeFi protocols when you can just put it in treasuries or a savings account where you couldn't do that, you know, three, four years ago. Uh, synthetics is one that in second half of 2023, I can picture it um, having a lot more sort of relevancy in the market. They've been, deploying v3 or the third version of their protocol uh, that will be coming out in the second half of this year uh, and they've also been you know talking about different things they can do with the snx token i suppose to make it more uh more scarce um, and other ways that they can sort of drive value to the snx token they're still just in discussions on the, at, at the moment on their forums and in their discord and whatnot but uh, it's enough for me, I suppose, to pay attention because if they do decide, you know, to change the tokenomics is what they often call it, that can typically, especially in a bull market, that can really um, drive up demand for the token and add a lot of sort of speculation to the token and drive up prices. So probably wouldn't have an impact at the moment. I would have probably a subdued sort of impact if they announced a big change to the tokenomics uh, at the moment. But I think if we do sort of get market conditions to improve towards the end of the year, which I'm I'm thinking they will, uh, you know, SNX I think is definitely one to have on your have on your short list for those traders out there. Nice. At the moment, with with uh, this coin, I've I've just done this big box because we sort of seem to just be ranging 
at the moment. Yeah. I do have two support levels. So this bottom one is at $1.43. The current support is at $2 and resistance is at three around $3.42. So I can't see any sort of trade at the moment, but I'll be watching to see if what happens when we get back down to this support the support mm. line if we do which is at the two dollar one so not telling me much on the charts just we're ranging and we got our our levels of support and resistance to to watch there is there any news coming out about this coin anytime soon or um mainly just yeah mainly the launch of their v3 i suppose um one thing that they have announced and it's sort of ongoing, they're probably in the fourth or fifth week of um, adding a lot of incentives to, for traders or, you know, different users of their, of their sort of trading uh, protocols and whatnot. Uh, they do a lot of shorting like derivatives exchanges, I suppose are on synthetics, a lot of them. Um, and so traders or users are getting a lot more extra tokens, I, guess, I suppose used as incentives um so again in that in a bull market i reckon the start of that definitely would have driven up the price of snx um it kind of has since but again as you said Cass, it's sort of just ranging in in yeah. that figure yeah that broader one that's basically going back all the way to the start of this year and you know it's again like all those altcoins it's it's down 92 percent of its all-time highs i suppose btc and eth are down about they're like 60 percent sort of below their all-time mm. highs so another reminder of just the, that sort of amplification i was talking about where you get more aggressive to the upside more aggressive when the bear market comes um and then yeah more announcements in in the second half of 2023 but um oh, that's the thing also when he did ask that question um with these more established projects i'm also paying attention now to you know what is sort of going to drive the price in terms of a price catalyst because a lot of them these days are quite muted in their response which is yeah probably a bit to do with the bear market but when you've got the, the projects that have been around a while such as synthetics now which is you know three four five years old and, and there's many others really honestly in the top 100 just like like basically all of them i reckon would be you know, over three years old um I would, I would say the vast majority for sure. So it's like, okay, if they if they've launched V two of their project and they're announcing V three, like how much, how much like excitement does that sort of stir up and speculation? That's something I'm just paying attention to, and it is a bit of an indicator of how much, how many spec, how much speculators are entering the market. Which at the moment, uh, we'll talk I think a bit before this cast that you know engagement and all that has been uh, pretty pretty flat across across you know crypto socials but um it's just another thing to keep in mind when you got a new project coming out a lot of mania a lot of speculation versus i guess a bit of a older project that's just announcing another upgrade you know how much does the market really care about that yeah yeah okay that is interesting um yeah. something i will note too on this chart all time previous all-time high was about $28. So once again, next bull run, this coin has, you know, ample opportunity to to get back up there. Yeah, for sure. And a lot more, um, I guess, price history to to really trade a bit more confidently versus some of these newer tokens. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Love, love the data. Love the history. Yeah, yeah. It makes it a lot easier. Yeah, no, I, I'd imagine. Uh, but yeah, we will uh, wrap things up there. It's uh, yeah, nice to see BTC and ETH uh, climbing up a bit higher, but overall trend is is still still down on the higher time frames. But yeah, we will uh, check in again and see what happens this week, Cass. But uh, thanks everyone for for joining. Thanks, guys.